Baylor football plays 12 games this regular season. What is their ceiling for wins? And maybe more importantly, what is their floor? This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Thank you for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. And today's special guest is extra special. I spent months from 21st Century Spot Fox to Universal trying to get the star of the Big Lebowski and Monsters Inc. And oh, brother, where art thou? And on today's show, I can't, I got chills. John Goodman. John, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Drake, unfortunately, John couldn't be here. This is Joe Goodman. From the Bear Den Pod and our and uh, our Daily Bears. Oh, uh, um, y- yeah, I know. I get it all the time. Uh, he couldn't be here, but since our names are so close, he just sent me anyway. Wow, I'm gonna have a lot of angry Flintstones fans. I a lot of empty promises. There's a hospital of children right now that are going to be upset when I air this. Wouldn't I? Wouldn't Halle Berry in that movie? I think they'd be more upset about that. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I also didn't promise Halle Berry, though, but he, I went to high school with a Haley Berry. Now that would have been epic. Uh, speaking of epic, Joe Goodman, while I have you here, I'll flip to my Baylor questions instead. The Baylor Bears will have a ceiling of wins this football season. As I look up and down the schedule, there is there is somewhere where Baylor cannot exceed, which 12 is the obvious answer for any football team. But to be realistic in this Baylor football schedule, especially in the odd years where Baylor is typically not very even years where Baylor is typically not very good. Where do you see just to, to start? Let's just unroll it. Where do you see the ceiling being for this Baylor football team? 12 wins. If, mm-hmm. if we're talking about how high could you get without bumping your head, it's 12 and 0. That's that you, you put the, if I, okay, let me ask you this, the Yukon football team. I know you didn't do any game study on this, how, what's your ceiling for them? Are you a 12 across the board guy? Or is this truly you think this Baylor team has a shot to go undefeated? I Definitely not across the board. I think for UConn, I'd give them like three or four. Um, but this Baylor team has the capability of reaching that level, I think. Will they? Mm-hmm. But I don't think if it happened, it wouldn't be the biggest surprise in my life. This isn't this isn't a Baylor team from 2006, 2000. Eight. It isn't a Baylor team from 2017. Um, I think this coaching staff is extremely consistent, and I just I really like our chances. Um, and when I think about it, I can convince myself that this is a 12 win team. See, Joe, I have to. Here's what. I, here's what's interesting about this to me. I have become. I've realized so much more of like a Baylor pessimist. The better that Baylor gets, not that I resent Baylor being good, but I resent Baylor's brand becoming a kind of at the epitome of college football. That people see Baylor and they think, "Oh, good football." I struggle with that, and I know people in the comments have, have mentioned you got to at some point come to terms with Baylor being good and say it. I struggle because I don't want Baylor to be 10 and two every year and that be the expectation. And then they're not the underdog anymore. They become the the dog of college football. I've always loved Baylor being the underdog. If that goes away. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I, I thought maybe my ceilings at 10, even then I, then I moved to 11 and Joe, that's where I'm going to sit at 11. And a big part of this reason why, and I want to get your thoughts on this too, the schedule, the way that it's built with the amount of road games, mentioned it a billion times at West Virginia. That's They're maybe middle of the pack at best to me in the Big 12, but on the road, Baylor struggle, especially in Morgantown. You go to Iowa State, you go to Texas, you go to Oklahoma. You've got a plethora of road games where you're thinking, geez, you are, are pretty lucky. BYU, throw that in the loop too. You're pretty lucky to escape even at 500 in this swath of road games that Baylor has. Absolutely. And this team, if you looked at one weakness from last season, it was playing on the road. Both of your losses on the road to a really bad TCU uh, team in one of them. Yeah. The offense really, really struggled on the road last year. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if Baylor dropped a bunch of games and getting to that undefeated streak. It's even that much harder because so many of the literally the toughest games we play this year are on the road. Let's be honest. Yeah. And so it makes sense that you would think that they're probably going to lose them. I don't think they go 12 and 0, but I think there's a non-zero chance that they could be undefeated. Mm. So that's the ceiling for me. I I like the idea that Baylor wins all of their road games. The problem with my 
And I like the idea of the non-zero too. That that's at play. When I've set my ceiling here, it's the fact that if Baylor has the season where they go undefeated on the road. I think they go undefeated in general. I just don't see them losing at home. Oklahoma State's your toughest home test. And I I think Spencer Sanders is the single worst quarterback in America. Only when he plays Baylor, by the way, he's good against everybody else. But he was my Big 12 championship MVP last season, thanks to the four interceptions that he gave the Bears. So I think undefeated at home is, is great. But I just don't think there is a feasible chance that Baylor ends up going undefeated on the road. So what to you? You've mentioned the coaching staff. What is it from the player's standpoint that makes you think this group in 22 can win every single game they play on the road with this schedule? Because there's a little bit more experience behind it. Like, I think that might be the thing that could elevate them. And I want to use the word could, not will, Mm -hmm. should, may. I'm just, this is a very slight could, is that everybody that's going to be an impact player, they may not have been a starter last year, but they were involved with the team. They were in the rotation this is this was really the first year Aranda and this staff together as a team have had to play in road venues that were full of fans. In their first season, they were playing in COVID venues that were not full. So this was a learning experience last season for everybody. So I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that you see just some kind of jump there where just like we saw from year one to year two on his basic coaching, Aranda takes that step forward in year two to three on playing on the road. You know, Joe, I did not think of this until just this very moment it and i think a lot of baylor fans would disagree so maybe it's a hot take gary bohannon at times in his baylor career as a starter had a deer in headlights look there are plenty of times looking at even when charlie brewer went down and bohannon was brought up to play in that spot he had a few kansas state on the road in 2019 where he rose the occasion but there were times oklahoma state on the road last year where it's who is this guy because he he, it's like you forgot how to play football for a little bit because the atmosphere or whatever it be got to him Blake Shapin comes into the Big 12 championship game, goes 17 for his first 17. Just, it's like he doesn't care. It's like he looks at the the screen. What is the movie with the gladiators? And I think it's actually called Gladiator, where Blake Shapin looks at the arena and says, ah, and then just kills the lion. I don't know if Gary Bohannon had that in him consistently. I think Blake Shapin might. I agree with you. I think Bohannon especially got up in the home games against Texas, against Oklahoma. He played very, very well in those games against West Virginia, against Iowa State. The games where the crowd really wanted to win the game and had his back. So I can absolutely see where you're coming from. That could be another area of progression where we just see Shapin take this team a step forward just because he's got a different kind of personality. Even Joe, last question on the front of ceiling. And then obviously every home that has a ceiling will probably have a floor or just an endless abyss. And the endless abyss of 0-12, I think, is unreasonable for your Baylor Bears this year, not unlike some other Big 12 teams in Fort Worth. So this schedule, this team last year, where would you put the ceiling? Ooh, this team last year with this schedule, I would have put them probably at 9-3 and three or 8-4. and four. Really? Yeah. I, I think I would because I still think they probably lose to Oklahoma State yeah. in, in a home game um, during the regular season. Um, they probably lose to Oklahoma on the road last year, I would guess. Um, they The way that Iowa State game went, they probably would have lost to Ames last year um, or could have. So I could see this being would have been one or two extra losses that we didn't have this past season. So do you bank that then Baylor being uh, a ceiling that's three, four wins better this year on experience? Is that that is where you circle it? Yeah, I think that there's just going to be constant growth because these players are developing in within Grimes system, within Robert system, with Aranda as a head coach as a whole. And I think just the coaching staff maturity is going to be there. This they're they're all taking steps forward. This was Grimes first time. Um, really in the power five facing Oklahoma's facing Texas's um, coming from BYU. Like he did great work there, but this is a step up for Grimes last year. Same thing with Eric Mateos, the guys that we've seen um, around Ron Roberts. I mean, you're talking about a guy that came from, you know, mid majors. Um, So I think everybody's going to have growth year two to year three. So I think there could be improvement. There's still a lot of question marks and we'll see that when we get to the floor. That floor is coming up next, but first, I can tell the folks at home about one of the newest sponsors here at Locked On. That is the NHTSA Drive Sober. So you're hanging out with some friends, putting back a few drinks, and a few becomes too many. As the evening continues, people start to head out. You think of calling for a ride, but you live nearby. You think you can make it. Not a big deal. And 
what are the odds you get pulled over? And what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up if you do. You lose your license? Well, what if you lose your job? What if you total your car? What if you kill someone? Everyone knows the risk of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now to look for impaired drivers on the roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe, plan ahead, get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Keen reminder, drive sober or get pulled over. Joe, when it comes to floor for Baylor football this year, floor last year was like three wins. And you could probably make the case. I don't think you make the case for two, but three wins is a pretty solid floor, a pretty safe floor last season. This year, obviously, things are a little bit different for the Baylor Bears. Number 10 team in the country in the coaches poll and the AP poll. I've heard a lot of folks set their floor at seven and five. Where do you land? Six and six. I think I think this could be it's a bold team no matter what, in my opinion. But yeah, if the bottom falls out of this thing, I could see this team only winning six games. Mm. My floor, Joe, gosh, dang it. You were supposed to be the good guy. I was going to say six and six. I think five and seven is completely unreasonable, especially after the success last year. There's just no way there is a. 0% chance in my mind that Baylor goes undefeated on the road. There's a 0% chance in my mind that Baylor goes winless on the road or that they end up being this season five and seven. I go six and six. And in that scenario, Baylor faces injuries. I do not believe a healthy Baylor team, especially up front, offensively and defensively, will go six and six. There's not a realm of possibility where I think that's going to happen. But my six and six, and I want to hear yours kind of in, in more detail, features a loss against BYU. Give me a loss against Oklahoma State at home. You go to West Virginia, you lose that one. You lose to Iowa State on the road. You have Oklahoma, you also lose. Say you lose Texas and you lose Kansas State. That's my, is that seven? Joe, did I just lift off seven teams? My you just floor, did. My floor is five and seven. Five and seven, Baylor goes to a bowl still, I think. But give me give me five and seven with the game at, I again, the road schedule being so tough. So my put my floor at five and seven. I will be the bad guy. Ha. Huh. Joe, your floor consists of losses to which teams? So my floor consists of at BYU, at Iowa State, at West Virginia, um, and at at Texas, and then probably Kansas State at home or Oklahoma State at home. Mm. One of those two. Let me ask you this. Interesting. Kansas State at home, not Oklahoma State at home. Why is that? I have a lot of questions about Oklahoma State's defense compared to last year. So... Losing Jim Knowles is a big deal. The, but the other part of that is look at Jim Knowles' history. That was his first year of like being a really, really good defensive coordinator. Yeah. So I'm wondering if there was just a lot of flukes that were happening there. Um, he either figured something out or that defense figured something out. They were the right mesh at the right time of players and scheme. Um, but I think that defense is going to take a major step back. And as you alluded to earlier, Spencer Sanders turns into the worst quarterback in the history of the game of football when he plays against Dave Aranda. Um, and so I have more faith in beating Oklahoma state than I do against Kansas state. Who's just a thorn in everybody's side. Kansas state at home this year, the one team that <laughs> not the only, but the team that you're like, Oh, Dave Aranda's undefeated against them. Cause he beat them in the two and seven season, which was just a flash in the pan game. <laughs> Were you at that game in Waco? I wasn't at that one. Oh, dude, that you are better off for it. You saved years of your life. It was the worst football game I think I've ever seen. Worst Baylor football win that I've seen where it's like, no one deserves to win this game. I hope every team goes home with a loss because this is such bad, awful. It was pouring rain. Ten people were there. I was one of the ten. I can attest. And it was just awful. So I think Kansas State coming to Waco this year, I have a lot of confidence that being a Baylor win, especially over Oklahoma State coming home, because I I do believe that whatever Gundy throws out there is going to be somewhat formidable. And they came to Waco two years ago. Much different scenario, but they blew Baylor's doors off. So not going to be that afraid of the road game. Uh, Another question that I had for you. This, what you've built, means that you have lock wins against TCU, against Texas Tech, against Kansas, which I think everybody would pretty much agree with that. Do you feel as though those three conference games will be the ones that there's just no way Baylor went, Baylor loses? Yeah, I, I think TCU at home after last year, I think oh. these guys are going to take a lot of pride in that game. So that one is just, they're going to win that game in my mind. Kansas is still Kansas. I, everybody's jumping on the Lance uh, Leipold uh, bandwagon. I'm not there yet. They're still Kansas. Yeah. Um, and then Texas Tech, 
I think is going to be good someday, mm. but not today. And I think I think we might see Tech have one of the one of the worst seasons they've had in a while. I think it's going to be a transition year. Um, so I don't I don't see Baylor losing to Texas Tech. Yeah, there's the the thing in college. It's it's to me. This is true. It's objective. It's easier to win faster in college basketball. If you get the great mastermind, great recruiter, the transfer portal, all you got to do in basketball is recruit four guys out of the portal and your team's studly. Football, you probably lost half your guys and trying to get them out of the portals just, you know, it take hell and got to go through hell and half of Georgia to get a somewhat formidable football team day one. And McGuire has that big time, you know, everybody gets super hype. I think those guys will get a little too emotional going into the season and then find out, oh, shoot, it was fun to talk about. But when you face NC State on the road, Houston at home, Texas, the opening of their season is just brutal. So I, I'm not, I'm with you. I'm not sure if I'm drinking the, the Texas Tech Kool-Aid yet. One of the Kool-Aids I am drinking, though, this has been a hot topic, BYU on the road in week two. I really like this BYU team because they're in Provo. If it was in Waco, I'd probably feel a lot differently, but I just think that atmosphere is such a put up or shut up that it, it just, it feels like Baylor's odds to win that game are pretty slim. I agree. Yeah. I think that is your early test. Again, we've got a lot of new guys that are going to be coming in and starting. They've been a part of this team for a while, and this is their third year with the staff, but this is their first time carrying the, the water per se for yeah. the team. And that's going to be a rough environment to experience that early in the season. I think they're going to have one of the nastiest defenses that we're going to face all year long. Um, and yeah, I don't have a whole lot of faith. Um, the only saving grace Whoa, in that game. Joe, man, Baptist, you gotta have, <laughs> there's gotta be, you gotta have, so, you and Mormon. I guess we gotta have faith, but the, the one thing that I can see out of that game that we may be overthinking is I listened to a lot of their media after we beat them last year. And their fan base and the media around that team were like, wow, we we have a ways to go to catch up when it comes yeah. to size, strength and speed. And so it could be like what we're talking about with tech. You can't do that in a year. Yeah. Put Siaki Ika, Gabe Hall and Jackson player up against BYU or anybody. And they're going to have a hard time. So you get that week two in Provo. The last thing I want to pinpoint here when it talks about when you talk about the floor of this team, I think the key to five and seven really were that were that. It, that's turned all the way up and you get a really good shot is West Virginia. If you go to Morgantown and you lose that game, you're probably staring down the barrel. It's in the middle of your schedule. You're probably staring down the barrel of a not great season. What do you foresee in Morgantown for a West Virginia team that I've seen some outlets project to be in the top three in the big 12? It's a game. Okay. If we're talking floor, absolutely. I could see us losing it. You've got, yeah. you've got Morgantown in general, which we are snake bit in that town. And you know, if they're fired up, over there, it's a really tough environment to play, and it's still a tough environment to play if they aren't fired up. It's just one of those places, especially for Baylor. Two, you've got a head coach there that's on the hot seat that's going to be doing everything he can to keep his job this year. And three, they've got a quarterback transferring in, and that's been one of the core positions that they've struggled with over the last few years. If this, if JT Daniels can come in and actually be competent, that could take them over the next level, and we could see West Virginia being good West Virginia again. Well, I land on Lord unwilling and the creek does rise. Baylor gets wins against Albany, Texas State. I think those are both locks pretty obviously. Kansas, Texas Tech, and TCU. I think those five right now are locked in for me. But worst case, you have a few injuries. Morale's bad. You have a tough start to the season as well. Five and seven is my floor. Joe Goodman, you're going six and six. I'm going six and six. Well, the next thing I want to get is what you are most excited for this season and then your biggest question because that 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 gap between six and six and 12 and zero is a pretty large floor to ceiling gap where a lot can happen in between so there there are question marks certainly for me but first what is it when this team trots out against albany week one that you are most looking forward to seeing blake shapen under under center i i am very excited i think we're going to see like a, a more fun offense. And I think we're going to go back to maybe uh, stretching the field a little bit more, but I just don't know. Um, anytime there's something new, that's what I'm always most excited about. Um, so I'm really excited to just sit there week one, Albany 6 PM and just watch him sling it around and see what the offense looks like. Yeah. I have not checked the weather in Albany. We're getting close enough. The 10 day forecast where in a few days we'll be able to see what the weather in Albany is on September 3rd, September 3rd. September 3rd. September 3rd, yes. September 3rd. I am guessing it'll be somewhere in the realm of like 74 degrees with a low of 59. 
I'm also guessing Waco, Texas at 6 p.m. will somewhere be somewhere around 97 degrees <laughs> with a low of 82 or what have you. So that's going to be a factor in that game. That's not actually what I'm most excited to see, though, contrary to popular belief, not the weather, but instead a force of nature, haha, <laughs> small pun, in Jackson players, Yaki Ika and Gabe Hall. That is going to be, is it is it bad to say I'm I'm scared? For an opposing team, I don't want to sound demeaning, but Albany football, n- not a lot of people know a lot about Albany football, and now you have maybe the most monstrous defensive line of the nation coming down upon you. Yeah, I, I do not envy them whatsoever. No. The the one advantage they have is that it's likely that Jackson Player um, and Siaki Ika do not play past the second quarter. They should hope, right? They should, like, after the first drive, be like, guys... This was fun. The check was great. The food, the accommodations. See you later. Going back to Albany. Huzzah, huzzah. But that's when, if they throw in their freshmen, God bless those poor Albany kids. It's just bad for everybody involved, no matter how you look at it. However, Joe, remember that one time Liberty came to town? Uh, no, I I don't recall. Yeah, most people have taken that out of their memory. And I, I it's forgot. not remotely comparable in any way. But at the same time, it is... Good to say Baylor's in a spot where they can play the little team and be like, whew, we're going to beat the crap out of them. Whereas Texas State last year it told me in the second quarter that Baylor's going to win. I was like, well, it's 50-50 right now. So great to know Baylor's already out of the realm of will they lose the FCS school. And Joe, now comes the fun part. Your biggest question mark this season, if 6-6 six and six happens, where is that going to happen during injuries? I so I don't think this is about X's and O's or play calling or anything. I think it is a the thing that I'm most worried about is just the general vibe around the team. Losing Terrell Bernard, losing yeah. Jalen Petrie, the heart and soul of your team. And how is there going to be a massive effect there that we are just not accounting for yet? Mm. I loved in the press conferences they've had over the course of the last week in practice that I believe it was Gabe Hall came out and was like, look, there's a different vibe on this team than last season because it's better because we have become such a brotherhood. And I was like, that's weird. Jalen Petrie and Terrell Bernard played last season. So I don't know. I was confused as to how the brotherhood and the vibe got better. And it almost makes me think they trot out game one. Those guys aren't out there. And you realize real quick, oh, shoot. Those are two massive holes to fill in the defense, and somebody else has to step into that role. So I I put that along with the schedule. Again, it's not an X's and O's thing. It's how can Baylor play on the road after crapping the absolute bed? Again, as what's the guy's name from Oklahoma? Spencer Sanders is against Baylor is the worst quarterback to ever exist. Chandler Morris against Baylor was the arch manning of just dominant football. And I don't think that happens in Waco. That road game to me was another reminder that Baylor's just not very good in big road games. Historically, I, and I'm really, I'm still, I'm really worried about that. Yeah, no, I I wholeheartedly agree. If you asked me today to tell you how many wins I think Baylor ends up with, I would probably tell you this is a eight or nine win team. Mm. Are you okay with that? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. I never want to become Tennessee or Michigan where you get a taste of success and suddenly that be in Texas for that matter. And yeah. suddenly that that becomes that becomes the end all be all where if you don't reach that height, then it doesn't matter anymore. An eight win season is is great. I will take that. I love that you said that. I have been looking for a way to describe it. This I don't want to become Michigan. I don't want to become Tennessee, where Baylor is the number ten team in the country. They go eight and four, and everyone thinks what a what a a bad year or what a disappointing year for Baylor. That's why I like the underdog mentality because the only what only place is up. Everybody's all they're excited for whatever you do. When you're number ten in the country, you go ten and two. The nation looks at you and goes, "Cool, you were supposed to do that. That's great, great for you guys." When you're off the radar, if you're, say, TCU this season goes 10-2, and two, everybody's gawking about, oh, TCU, how did they do it? I'm going to miss that part of this for Baylor because there's so much more of a risk when everyone is expecting you to be good. I don't like that part of this, but at the same time, obviously, your brand changes and there's so much good that does come with it. So this year, eight wins, nine wins, 
I would, I'm a senior, so I would like to go out a little bit better than that, Joe. Thanks a lot for tempering my expectations. But that that's good. That's where I wanted to end. If you had to set it between the floor, between the ceiling, realistically, you're going eight or nine. I'm going eight or nine. Mm, lock it in. I would say the same thing. I think nine is is where I'll land. That's kind of the optimist in me too. I think eight is where I'm more re where I'm really setting it. But I would love a nine win season after last year at ten and two with the schedule Baylor was playing to go ten and two last season. If you go nine and three this year, you're an even better team. Because again, like you said, last year's team with this schedule probably goes eight and four. So if they go nine and three this year, it shows they're probably better than last year's squad. But the schedule favored them so much. A hundred percent. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Mm. Joe, ah, absolute pleasure. I have been waiting for this day. It's it's Fank. He's the only one left. It's like everybody else in the universe. I have somehow come out and we've potted together. And you now, you've made it. You came on before Fank did. I, 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 oh, wow. I beat him, but, Huge. uh, I, I waited until just the perfect time because it's right now. Everybody's undefeated. Yes, they are. And they will be for another 17 days. This is that weird part of the season where it's like football's close. And then you hit one of those days, two weeks out and you're like, it's not as close as I thought it was. Still got to wait for a long time. I, I, it'll, it'll hit me when I, when I hit the first tailgate. Yeah. It's like the little, it's like, I think, oh, it's football season and the Little League World Series is on. You're like, no, it's not. It's Little <laughs> League World Series season. It's exactly what it is, which by the way, I'm going to, today is Wednesday. So I'm going to go watch plenty of Little League World Series. You all should too. Thank you for listening to Locked On Baylor. If you haven't followed Joe, you don't know his stuff. He is the Joe Goodman, by the way, not John, Joe. And Joe, where can they find your ODB stuff? They can find me on ourdailybears.com. Uh, I have a, articles popping up there every once in a while. I cover kind of more of the new stuff. So if you're following like uh, any of the stories around the Big Ten or any updates around what's going on in Baylor, uh, you can come check me out there. And then I also have a podcast that you can check out um, called The Bear Den. You can find us on uh, on Twitter at The Bear Den Pod. Um, and you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere else you can catch podcasts at. Mm. If you want to find me, I will be in Waco uh, in my Bear Den. Ha! Uh, or at 7 p.m. tonight at China Spring High School where they meet the Cougs. Gosh, I love those guys. Joe, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Absolute pleasure. We'll do it again pretty soon. Excellent. Thank you, Drake. Thanks to those listening for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day and your second listen as a free plug there for you, Joe. Oh, I totally, totally missed that. (laughs) (laughs) And your second listen, Joe Goodman. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, Folks, thanks for making us your first listen. The Bear Den Pod 2, your second listen. And when we come back tomorrow, John Garcia Jr. joins the show. When we come back Friday, the head coach of the Albany Great Danes comes on Locked on Baylor. Don't miss it. This has been, I already said it. I'm going to say it again. Locked on Baylor.